Hello, welcome to Country Living with the Wades. I'm Philip. I'm here at the third raised bed, and today what I'm going to talk to you is about the problems we've had with worms. Now, over the few years that we've been doing our gardening, uh, we've tried to fight worms from a lot of different ways. The first one, of course, was, was something like a seven dust, but we wanted to get away from anything like that, so we tried neem oil last year. Uh, it didn't work as well. This year, uh, we tried the uh, BT, and the BT seems to work by far better than anything else, in summary. So as you, walk, uh, as you go through this video, you'll see uh, progressively how our garden starts off as very, very small, then it grows, and eventually I just took the net completely off. I think the net really helps uh, in one way, uh, but uh, in another way, maybe it causes a problem too. So we'll just have to continue to test with it and experiment with using the net and not using the net. I wish I had been more diligent about using the BT because as soon as I saw something uh, that I thought was maybe slugs or something eating on some of the, the plants on the lower leaves, I assumed it was that's what it was and, and not a caterpillar. Had I realized that it was caterpillars and started using the BT earlier, I'm sure I would have never had the problem uh, that I had that, that you'll see in this video, but the BT really, really works well. So I hope you learn from our uh, problems and our experience. We're definitely learning from our experience. So enjoy the video and God bless you. Well, my raised bed is looking pretty good. My plants are looking good and healthy. I think they've been in there four days now. I haven't thinned any yet. I'll give them another couple of days and I'll thin out uh, where there's doubles. But I want to show you some worm damage that I already have. There's no guarantee that the netting will keep out 100% of the butterflies and just one of those white butterflies, especially the, the white ones that do the cabbage worms, uh, they'll lay one egg at a time up to 30 to 90 eggs at, uh, when they start laying and they'll lay them on the back side of the leaves so you don't see them and they are extremely small. This is a leaf I picked a few minutes ago and you see the little tiny holes in there that told me that there was problems on it. Now I'm going to flip it around so you can see what's on the back side. It's so small, I don't know if you can focus on it very well, but if I get close enough, can you see three worms on that? And it looks like maybe another egg at the top that hasn't hatched yet. There's one, two, and three. Now looking at them with a the naked eye, I would not even notice those. But because I have the holes in the plants, I know that there's a problem. While the plants were in the nursery pots, they were not protected with a netting or anything, so they were exposed to any kind of butterflies or other insects. Um, just the fact that these have already hatched, I want to say this was at least five or six days earlier, well before the netting was put over. Now that I know I have a problem and there are worms that I can see, it's time to put the BT on the plants. So this is the product I'll be trying. Monterey BT for organic gardening controls worms, caterpillars on fruits, vegetables, ornamentals, and shade trees. Now I've tried other products like neem oil and I haven't really gotten the results that I'd hoped for, so maybe this one's it. So, and you can spray it on, it doesn't affect people at all. Uh, you just spray it on the back side of the leaves and directly on the caterpillars if you can see any. Um, and maybe you have to repeat it in about five days if there were a lot of eggs. When they eat it, they lose their appetite and they starve to death. Uh, it cost, I don't know, 20, 20, 22 dollars, something like that. Nobody had it in stock, so I had to order it online. It's a concentrate and it only takes one teaspoon per quart. So this holds a quart, this little sprayer holds one quart. So I put one teaspoon in it and that's all I've used out of it. And another good thing is, is since this is a bacterium, uh, there is about a five year shelf life on this. So it lasts a long time. You see that one? That's a female. See how large the dots are on her wings? The male has little small dots and the female has large diameter dots. Uh, it's one thing that's good to know about these white butterflies that make the uh, cabbage worms. And uh, that's they're lazy. They sleep in late in the mornings and they go to bed early at night. 
For example, um, the first two hours of daylight, you won't see any anywhere. And uh, also, you know, they only like the, the broad sunny areas. For example, you won't see them in the, in the shady areas. They stay in places that's of full sunlight. So what that means is, if I want to open the top on this and do a little maintenance, uh, pull a couple of little weeds, uh, pick some fruit, uh, whatever, uh, it's best to do it uh, in the first couple of hours of the daylight or in the evening. Uh, today it's, uh, we got about another hour and a half, two hours, I guess, of uh, daylight, but uh, it's overcast. So there's no butterflies flying around. So it's a perfect time for me to go ahead and unveil the fruit. It's that easy. And what I want to do right now is take some of these little leaves that are uh, have died or are turning yellow off of the broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Go ahead and take them out. I'm really pleased with doing this three high. The, 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 the work that you have to do uh, after you've already got it built and the fruit in there is, is nothing. And you just bend over here, pull something off. It's not like you're bending all the way down to the ground. The dirt is soft because it has uh, so much topsoil and, and potting uh, mix and compost and all mixed in there that uh, it's really, it never gets hard. So you can reach in there and pull up weeds or whatever with your fingertips. Yeah, we're still worm free, which is really, really good. Ah, I take that back. It's a culprit right there. I'll show you. Look at this. That looks like a, a type of army worm. The only damage that I've seen on the leaves, I thought was happening from some kind of beetle or something at night because I've examined these looking for worms and I haven't found any. But this right here, that has to be from him because that's where he was at. Well, what have we done? Look at that. All the lower limbs of the broccoli and the Brussels sprouts, I went ahead and I pulled off, which I would normally do anyway. But with the worm situation that we've got, it was just on the Brussels sprouts, but now it's on the broccoli as well. I need to show you this. I wish I could say everything was a success in everything that we do. I mean, the Brussels sprouts looking good. No real problems anywhere showing on that one. Some leaf damage down there, but not much. A lot more leaf damage down here. You see the little worm? Right there. Culprit. Little tiny, tiny worms. But look at the damage to the Brussels sprouts. See those? Just eating up the lower Brussels sprouts. Now the upper Brussels sprouts are still good. They're not large yet. And the same over here, the lower Brussels sprouts. But that one is maybe the worst. But look over here. You can see a little bit of worm damage there but these are not um, these are not the cabbage worms look at this you can see this little small one right there maybe I don't know what kind of worms these are but I know this BT is supposed to take care of them and I think they make a little bitty tiny butterfly or moth and look at this this is where I really noticed it this was just eaten up wasn't cabbage worms, though. It was those little bitty worms. And I was thinking I had something eating it at nighttime, like some kind of a slug. But then when I looked at the Brussels sprouts and I took one off and tore it apart and I found one of those little tiny worms in there, that's when I realized this was worms. And I probably had one of these little bitty tiny moths or butterflies, whatever it is, entrapped inside my net. So now I've sprayed everything with BT. Uh, I'll spray again in five more days. I'm going to leave the netting off, go ahead and take it off and fold it up, 
and leave this open to the outside and just spray it every five days with BT. And we'll see how that does. You see here, there's one right there on this leaf. There's another one, another one, another one, and another one. And they're so small, they're making little cocoon things right there. There's gnats flying around. So they must make a very, very small butterfly. A little bit closer on the Brussels sprouts. You can see some of those there at the bottom that had the early worm damage from that little tiny worm. Uh, those we probably won't use at all. We'll probably just go ahead and pull all those off. But look at these coming up here. Look how nice those look. I probably need to take more of the top leaves off of the Brussels sprouts so that the concentration and growth will be on the upper Brussels sprouts along the trunk or stem, whatever you call the base part. But it's really looking good. Apparently we're getting some kind of caterpillar in the carrots. Look, there's another one right there. Yeah, buddy. That's two. They are definitely different looking. I wonder what kind of butterfly makes them. Well, as we continued to search through for more caterpillars, we did find a total of four caterpillars, grand total, and all the 500 carrots. But it's about time to pull the carrots anyway, so I don't think there's any kind of problem with that.